Plant cells are more complicated and exciting than you might think. Cells are the building blocks of plant tissue. Roots, stems, and leaves are all built from cells. Now let's see what's actually inside of these mysterious little things. All right, we'll crack it open. What we see here is a bunch of bodies called organelles. All the organelles are floating inside a jelly-like fluid called cytoplasm. This light green layer over here is the cell membrane. The cell membrane protects the cytoplasm from the outside environment. And remember, unlike animal cells, plant cells are covered with another protective layer called the cell wall. The cell wall and the cell membrane hold together the insides of the cell. And thanks to the rigidness of the cell wall, plants can grow very high. Small holes in the cell wall let certain materials in or out of the cell. Now let's return to the organelles. Uh, by the way, the word organelle actually means little body. And each of these tiny little organs floating in the cytoplasm does a special and unique job. Actually, if you look at the cell as a whole, it actually resembles a tiny fantastic city with its food factories and powerhouses, post offices, and so on. Let's start with the nucleus. Here it is, the command center of the cell. It stores genetic information of the cell and controls the complex processes that take place inside the cell. This little guy inside the nucleus is called the nucleolus. The nucleolus produces ribosomes, and we'll get to them later. And here outside the nucleus, we see a network of membranes folded into sacs. These sacs form interconnected channels, all connected to the openings in the nucleus. This network of membranes is called the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. As you can see, the large surface of the ER is covered by ribosomes, these little yellow guys. The surface looks bumpy, that's why it's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER. And do you see how busy these ribosomes are? On the large surface of the RER, ribosomes are actually doing a very important job. They produce proteins, and again, we'll talk more about protein production later. Now, where do you think the food factories of the plant cell are? We should look for something green. And here are the chloroplasts. The amazing process called photosynthesis happens inside of the chloroplasts. And with the help of light, plants can make food in the form of sugar. But again, that'll be another story. By the way, it's important to remember that chloroplasts are unique for plant cells. Animal cells just don't have them. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, a green pigment that is responsible for the green color of leaves and other parts of the plant. This huge blue bubble over here is the vacuole. Plant cells actually have several vacuoles, but the main one, the big one, is called the central vacuole. It works like a storage or a water tank. It's huge and can actually occupy up to 80% of the cell. We can think of it as the warehouse of the cell, storing nutrients, waste products, and other chemicals. This noisy little guy is the mitochondrion, the powerhouse of the cell. Mitochondrion produces energy the cell needs to run its day-to-day -day business. The plural for mitochondrion is mitochondria, so if you hear both of the terms, don't get confused. Both plant and animal cells have mitochondria. Every cell needs a powerhouse. And finally, we have the post office. If you look, it seems like this thing is actually made of layered pancakes. What can I say? This is how the cell's post office looks like. The official name of this organ is the Golgi complex. You might also hear names like the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. They're all correct. 
The Golgi complex takes in proteins and other materials, combines or modifies them, assigns destinations inside or outside of the cell, packs them up nicely, and sends them off to their destinations. Now that we know a lot about the organelles inside of the cell, let's see how they all work together. One of the main functions, or one of the main jobs that the cell does, is making all sorts of materials, like proteins or lipids. Now let's dive into how proteins are made. Everything starts at the nucleolus. You remember the nucleolus, that little guy inside of the nucleus. The nucleolus produces ribosomes. You might have already guessed what ribosomes actually do. They produce the proteins. Ribosomes leave the nucleolus and nucleus through networks of interconnected channels of the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. They stick to its surface, making rough ER. The nucleolus provides instructions for ribosomes, basically a manual ribosomes can use to correctly assemble the protein from amino acids. Proteins are made from amino acids by ribosomes on the surface of ER. The process of assembling a protein is called translation. Once the protein translation is complete, the protein pinches off the surface of the ER and is packed into special bubbles called vesicles. This way, the protein can safely travel to the Golgi complex. The chemicals inside the Golgi complex layer take care of the newly arrived, underdeveloped protein. It combines it with other proteins into protein complexes. The Golgi complex attaches special markers so the whole system knows where to send the protein once it's packed and out of the cell's post office. In our case, the protein is packed for export. It moves through the cytoplasm towards the cell wall. The vesicle surrounding the protein merges with the cell membrane. This way, the protein finds itself outside of the cell. Take care, you little protein. In the Namu world, you can play with cells or other parts of plants, like roots or flowers turning into fruits. Download the Namu app and have lots of fun exploring the wonders of plant life.